कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन Good evening, Fiji. In this bulletin, hefty sentence for rapist pastor. Commission investigates alleged brutality and police traffic operations showing results. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. A church pastor who raped three members of his congregation has been labelled a wolf in sheep's clothing. Waisake Tulavu was sentenced to 16 years imprisonment by the Suva High Court this morning. Apanisa Wangarundovu reports Tulavu was convicted of four counts of rape and one count of sexual assault. Disgraced pastor Waisake Tulavu raped three women of his congregation aged 22, 29 and 32 in Nasinu in 2018. In the High Court today, the judge says all three women were casual members who came to the Agape Healing Ministry on the invitation of the offender for a prayer of deliverance. He says Tulavu's actions were well planned and premeditated. The judge says Tulavu involved his followers to help him gain the trust of the victims, unaware he had a scheme to sexually abuse them. The judge added the offense was a gross breach of the victim's trust at both human and spiritual level. Tulavu was told in court that he humiliated the victims because of his action and has harmed them psychologically. The judge told Tulavu that instead of upholding the trust and sanctity of his role as a pastor, the offender engaged in a conduct that had shocked the public conscience. A non-parole period of 12 years was set. Apinisawangarandovu, FBC News. The Human Rights and Anti-Discrimination Commission has conducted interviews with key witnesses and sought statements from close relatives in relation to the death of Mesake Sinu Lelewasa, commonly known as Sinu. The deceased was allegedly assaulted by a group of police officers on 12th October in Nandi. Commission Director Ashwin Raj says the cause of death certificate states the condition directly leading to death is extensive. Hemorrhage due to severe traumatic head injury and the external cause of injury is blunt force trauma. Based on witness statements, the commission believes the victim allegedly sustained injuries in the course of his arrest as excessive force may have been used. Witnesses claim they heard Sinu crying in pain and agony. The Fiji Women's Crisis Centre says corporations must look after their staff, regardless of gender, in order to increase productivity. Coordinator Shamima Ali says if organisations are serious about promoting gender equality and ending violence against women, then all staff need to go through gender sensitisation training. Kritika Kumar reports. The Women's Rights Group recommends every organisation to have a policy against sexual harassment and know how to support domestic violence victims. So how are you going to support them? Clear policies, you know, really clear policies that everyone should know so, and your staff should know they can come to you and there are processes that you will, you know, how do you support them through counselling, do they need time off, who's looking after her children, all those things. Shami Mali says organisations also need to provide counselling for men. If the, uh, the, the rules are set right at the beginning and you are very serious about it, then we can go a long way. Lifeline Fiji believes there is not enough support services available for men. Um, wh when, we tr when we try to divide it, uh, where men's, males or female support service, uh, that brings the hardship of it. I think support service, counselling services are available for all and uh, it's entirely upon a person where the person has to reach out for help. The Fiji Women Crisis Centre received around 300 calls on its COVID-19 referral line from men seeking counselling. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The Fiji Police Force is hopeful their COVID-19 operations will drastically reduce road fatalities this year. Chief of Operation ACP Abdul Khan says the curfew restriction in place has greatly assisted them so far. Karoy Tandolala reports the road death toll is 30 compared to 47 for the same period last year. With festive season around the corner, the police force has mobilized and deployed teams around the country to ensure public safety. If we continue with this um, um, trend that we have, uh, that we can control, we we'll definitely try to reduce from the numbers that we had uh, for, for last year. And again, uh, for all road users, we would urge 
to have that uh, responsibility of uh, using the roads. A police operation unit conducted special operations in Savu Savu over the past few days to ensure motorists and the public are following road rules. ACP Khan says there should be no room for excuses from officers. Uh, we cannot be coming with an excuse of uh, it is an adverse weather conditions or whatever. If you'll see that even if it's rain, police officers will be out there. But in the uh, last few days, uh, there's been a traffic uh, management review that has been traffic flow that has been uh, reviewed at uh, Lambasa, where there used to be some uh, traffic congestion as well in Lambasa. And um, the officers had looked into that and they've put a me mechanism in place as how they can have a traffic flow. The Fiji Roads Authority hopes to work with police to ensure motorists follow road rules and avoid accidents and ease traffic flow. Uh, some of the drivers decided that uh, they will not follow the rules and they went past speeding uh, and uh, driving over the cones that were left there for guiding people. The force will be ramping up its traffic management operations in the next few weeks as we head into the festive season. Kori Tandulala, FBC News. Up ahead, Trade Expo generates interest. And North farmers make good use of agriculture show. By Radio Fiji 2, Deshki Dharkan. The unavailability of radiotherapy, also known as radiation therapy, has been hindering the treatment of breast cancer in Fiji. Although Fiji has enough resources to treat the deadly sickness, General Surgeon Dr. Ilaitian de la Sao says radiotherapy is an effective way to save a patient diagnosed with breast cancer. He adds late presentation is a big challenge for surgeons who want to help breast cancer patients. Meanwhile, Fiji recorded more than 150 breast cancer cases from January 2019 to last month alone. We don't have radiotherapy in Fiji. So in Fiji, we only have surgery and chemotherapy. So as a surgeon, I'm very pro-surgery. And we can do surgery if the cancer is early, if they present early. Investment Fiji believes business is returning to some state of normalcy as more international investors are keen to engage with local markets. This is despite initial forecasts that investment spending would fall to around 12.8% of GDP from an average of around 20% in the last three years. Josiah Nanunga reports the Fiji 50 Global Trade Expo has lured 60 potential export market deals. The recent Trade Expo noted an upsurge of exporters keen to partake in this initiative, which Investment Fiji sees as a swift adaptation to the new normal. We are here to ensure the success of Fijian products globally, and we, we felt that at this time, where we can't actually get into our, our, our must-win market, this was a really good opportunity to, to try and pull through some interest and connect our exporters with buyers. Strong says the Expo has been presenting high-quality products that we can push into the global market. Cosmetics um, has been a very popular in inquiry for, for, for the show, uh, followed by primary industries, then our fashion and apparel. Alcoholic um, uh, beverages was a quite a, um, you know, a, a well-frequented um, site as well, as, long as, as well as our manufactured goods. We must move urgently from dialogue to action to produce solutions that will not just stem the losses, but will help vulnerable countries, especially SIDS, keep pace with an inclusive global recovery. The Expo will be ongoing throughout this month, and Investment Fiji will make it a yearly event to promote exporters and the Fijian brands. Chosayen Anunga, FBC News. 75 communities have benefited from the three-year Vakarawai Fiji Pro Resilience, which ended in Vanuolevu yesterday. Funded by the European Union and implemented by the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, the projects have gone from supported activities to independent operations. Kelly Vavala reports. Close to 10,500 subsistence farmers were trained under the project, with 5,028 of them from Maduwata. This does not mean that the success story has to end here. It is now upon the communities, on you, to take this further, to continue with the ownership and the steer in the right direction. 
EU team leader economic and agriculture in the Pacific, Barbara Rickson, says the region is at the forefront of climate-induced disasters and such projects are needed. In Fiji, El Nino has multiplied existing challenges like food insecurity, health issues and the lack of access to clean drinking water. District Officer Madhuwata Aliveretti Ambenesinga says droughts have been a recurring issue in the province. You are able to improve the capacities of the communities, including subsistence farmers, women through trainings and demonstrations of good adaptation practices, while it was also the most sustainable way of empowering the communities as well as relevant infrastructure to strengthen resilience of subsistent farmers. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Farmers in the north have been urged to make good use of the assistance provided by the government during this pandemic. Speaking at the Agriculture Show in the Northern Division, Assistant Minister for Agriculture Viam Pile highlighted the government has provided initiatives, training and resources to support farmers. Sanyan Mboilo reports. <laughs> There is a need for farmers to work together and share experiences to help the agriculture industry get back on track. Please take advantage of all those assistance, work hard, and you need to progress and prosper in life. Please stay united, work together, share your experiences. If you are a success, successful farmer, share your experience to your neighboring community or your family members so that the community grows. The district grows, the division grows, and all together we will grow as a nation. Sabu Sabu farmer Ditya Nan Butru, who was awarded Farmer of the Year Award, has applauded the assistance provided by the government. That's a good encouragement and a support from the agriculture Sabu Sabu, who has been advising me on the copra farming uh, skills and uh, whatever they have shared until today with us. We still uh, appreciate uh, for their assistance and help. Northern farmers are taking advantage of the two-day show. Uh, it's very nice, so like uh, people can uh, do some planting at home, like the fruit trees or like that. Uh, really need uh, a lot of assistance to special the farmer, eh? especially like our place, it's a very dry place. The Women in Agriculture Award went to 70-year-old Gaya Wati, who has 46 years of farming experience on her 23.2 hectares of leased land. Sainiani Mboila, FBC News. And Whitney joins us now with the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie. Coming up in business tonight, FCCC enhances online platform. And restaurant business reopens. Stay with us. Pula nadang gua proslan kerse, gua irkraki. Do televi on baru on radio Fijuan, nado mui bit. Radio Fijuan, nado mui bit. The Consumer Protection Agency is upgrading its online platform to provide more efficient and effective service delivery. Through this upgrade, the Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission will be able to protect consumers from issues such as price gouging, howdering and illegal rent increase. Pranita Prakash reports. FCCC today signed an agreement with the United Nations Development Program which will enhance its online platform. Businesses can implement correct prices and consumers are not misled and overcharged. The user-centric digital transformation will enable Fijians to engage in fair market practices as consumers and business as operators, helping foster a culture of compliance in Fiji. A mobile application will also be developed to facilitate consumer and vendor access to pricing market information and complaint filing system. This partnership will help FCCC to strengthen its role to ensure that consumers can continue to access essential goods and services at an affordable price and to manage landlord-tenant issues. UNDP has also provided 20 tablets to assist FCCC in the inspections, surveys and complaint management. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. We now join Sinifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. New Zealand's consumer price index was released early this morning. The CPA data missed expectations and is expected to cause concern on the stock market. 
New Zealand's CPI for third quarter was 0.7% against the expected 0.9, and year on year was 1.4% against 1.7. Markets will be anticipating the next move from the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. Meanwhile, the U.S. headlines on U.S. fiscal negotiations were mixed overnight, but jobless claims and housing reports were encouraging. Weekly jobless claims for the U.S. eased this week, with both initial claims and continuing claims lower than anticipated. The U.S. dollar took stock at the end of a poor week today, having shared about a cent against the euro and suffered its largest weekly drop against the yen in a month. That's all from HFC Bank for this week. Have a great weekend. Here today's local exchange rate as set early this morning. Once again, the foreign exchange market seemed to have reversed from yesterday. The Fiji dollar showed gains against the Chinese yuan, the U.S. greenback, the Aussie dollar, the euro, and the Japanese yen. Prices were mixed on the commodities market. Oil rose a dollar to near $41 a barrel. Gold was down slightly at $1,908 per ounce. And silver closed higher at 24.80 per ounce. A Lotoka businessman who was forced to close his restaurant due to the effects of COVID-19 has reopened. South Sea's spot is a popular place in Lotoka, and when the restaurant had closed a few months back, customers were left wondering. However, the determination by owner Hafiz Rahman was the key in overcoming the issues brought due to the pandemic. The Amira restaurant has been his bread and butter for the past 18 years. Three staffs are employed by Rahman. With the support of this, uh, the management committee, uh, the trustees of uh, South Seas Club, they supported me a lot and they waived my rent for three months and that was a big help and that was the reason I was able to get back. We thought we'd, we'd go, we would lose the customers uh, but uh, as soon as we opened and the uh, votes went around, people started to come back. And that's it from Business Tonight. We now join Jamie with the latest in sports. Winako with me and good evening in sports tonight. Kuroi Sao family pumped up for grand final. And top teams are through to Savu Savu 7's cup quarters. This and more coming up. Bula FM, number 2 NSR. Bula FM, number 2 NSR. Relatives of Penrith Panthers hooker Apisai Kuroisau in Fiji have planned to watch the NRL Grand Final together on Sunday. As Kuroisau prepares for the match, his family in Saunaka Village, Nandi, have bought a new YLAC box so they can watch their hero in action live on the APC Sports Channel. Felipe Naikaso has more. It's a proud moment for the Kuroisau family and the villagers of Saunaka as one of their own will run onto the field for Sunday's final. We have just been counting down the days to the final. The family is excited about Apisai playing in the final, and we know he will do well because he has proved this already. Vilame Tonga is the elder brother of Apisai's father, Sikeli Koreisau, and the 69-year-old says any time his nephew plays, they are glued to their television or mobile phone. He plays like his father, and uh, we used to give his dad the nickname Grass Cutter just because of how he would tackle opponents, and Apisai has been sharing this style of tackling also. The family has already decided to meet in Votutu Solovi on Sunday to watch Apisai in action for the Panthers. <laughs> We bought our Walesi box just for the grand final as we want to watch Apisai in action. We are proud of him and we wish him all the best for the game. We will be cheering for him on Sunday night. The Panthers will clash with the storm in the NRL grand final at the ANZ Stadium in Sydney on Sunday at 8.30 p.m. You can watch the final live on FBC Sports Channel on the Wallace platform. Go, happy, go, Panthers, go! Philippe and I, Castle, FBC Sports.
It'll be a repeat of the Mara 7's quarterfinal when Jerry Tuwai's FDS Barbarians uh, side take on Uli Nakao in the Fiji Better Sabu Sabu 7's tomorrow at Nganilao Park. The Barbarians defeated Uli Nakao 22-7 in their Mara 7's clash at the ANZ Stadium last month. And tomorrow they meet again in the first quarterfinal in Sabu Sabu. In the second quarterfinal, Dominion Brothers uh, take on a star-studded Blue Gas Police Blue side. Blue Diamond meet uh, Blue Gas Police White while Tambandamu battles Raiwasa Resort Taviuni in the last quarterfinal. Top teams uh, like Ami, Waindingi Salvo and uh, Maravu Taviuni have failed to make the cup quarterfinals. New All Blacks prop George Bauer has revealed that he turned down the offer to play for Fiji at the World Cup last year because it was best to stay with New Zealand and play Super Rugby a bit more. Bauer, who has links to Wangandadi in Obalau, says he'd love to play for Fiji, but the All Blacks has definitely been a dream for him. He adds it was a hard decision when approached last year by former Flying Fijians coach John McKee. Bauer is the second prop with links to Fiji in the All Blacks squad after Alex Hodgman made his debut last week. Football has been a pillar of strength for Suva FC's uh, Manasa Mrabilala, who had to endure a few family struggles early in his childhood. Faced with the trauma of uh, his parents separating when he was nine, Mrabilala found love and comfort in the sport. Tali Matarikula with a story. It wasn't all smooth sailing for Felipe Mbaravilala after discovering his talent for football while in class four at San Beto Sangam School. At the time, uh, never wanted to go back to school, but and then this opportunity came. So, firstly, my my family at that time never wanted me to play football, so I just continued to play football and. I got interested in it. Football was in his heart, but his parents resisted. It was only with the support of his grandfather, Manu Angalo, that the 26-year-old was able to live his dream. Even though that my parents didn't allow me to, but he was the one who was encouraging me. You should play because football will take you places that you have never dreamt of. And it did happen. Now four years after joining the Whites, Baravilala aims to win his first VPL title with Suva. It's been long since I've uh, been playing for Suva, five years. I've never won any title yet. So definitely I will give all my best in these three games that is uh, ahead of us so that we can win. So I can also say that yes, I've won a title playing in uh, Suva, Suva side. He's not the only one chasing victory for Suva as the team coach has similar ambitions. All coaches dream to win the National League, you know. That's a big, uh, big act for a coach. Baravilala will be in action for Suva on Sunday when they take on Sinu at 3 p.m. at ANZ Stadium. Tali Materkula, FBC Sports. Boxers are gearing up for the current promotions event next month in Nandi, stepping up their preparations to be in tip-top shape. One in particular is Fijian welterweight champion Ronald the Terminator Naidu, who takes on Chese the hitman Ravundi for a shot at the vacant WBF Asia Pacific Super Welterweight title. Felipe Nicasso reports. Ronald Naidu has stated that he will not let his guard down this time around as he aims to beat Chese Ravundi again. Um, now I'm confident I go for knockout and I just want to say be prepared because this time I'm not joking. So I'm really training well and I've never trained before and I'm looking for a knockout. The Mulumulu boxer has upped his preparations as he is aware that Ravundi will be out for blood. Training is going on good and training harder than before for this fight. Uh, yeah, expecting a good fight from Chase, a good clean fight. Another boxer that wants to prove a point is Rahul Kumar. Kumar will be out for revenge when he takes on Samuel Ramunuds. Training so hard and it's for the win and uh, this win will take me for my next title shot, maybe next year, but uh, for this time I'm training hard for a win. The boxing event will be held on the 14th of November at Prince Al's Park in Nandi. Philip and I, Kasu, FBC Sports. The Super Bowling Club is ready to host the 14th Raj Charan National Open Singles tomorrow. The annual championship commemorates one of the pioneers of Fiji bowling, Karleni Tavi, with the details. The championship will see bowlers from around the country competing for one of the most prestigious titles in the sport. Very high profile uh, bowling that's going to be happening this weekend. 
where, where all the top bowlers in Fiji will be here to to play against each other or to rub soldiers on the green. There will be 30 men and 20 women competing in their respective categories. Current and former national bowlers will also be competing. The Suva Bowling Club will be looking to host more competitions like the Raj Charan National Open Singles once the third green opens. And we're showcasing the Suva Bowling Club. Next year um, we will have our third green up and running as well so we will be able to host even larger tournaments. Uh, competitions like this, we'll, we want to have more of them more regularly. The championship ends on Sunday with the winner walking away $1,000 richer. Karle Nitavi, FBC Sports. The Lakemba cricket team is confident the club can improve on its performance in the next round of the Cricket Fiji Association Cup currently underway. The side has so far recorded two wins against the Vivia and Kambara and two losses against Onoilao and Como. Lakemba manager Peter Rombakani says there is still a lot of room for improvement before the playoff stage. We will need to work on our batting and also our bowlers will need to step up their game if they want to remain in the competition. We want to be the first to win the Association Cup. With the NRL Grand Final coming up in today's uh, Play of the Day, we take a look back in time. The Penrith Panthers have only won the NRL Premiership twice in the competition's 112-year history. The last time the Panthers won was in 2003 in a Grand Final best remembered for the try-saving tackle by second rower Scott Sadler on Sydney Roosters speedster Todd Byrne. Many say it was the greatest ever Grand Final try-saving tackle. That's it from Sports Tonight in New Media. Experts say the iPhone 12 OLED display is better than your 4K TV. Find out why after the break. Radio Fiji 2, Desh Ki Dharkat. Angie joins us now with the latest in weather. Good evening and welcome to the Weather World. It's a Friday and it started off fine with nice sunshine and mild temperatures. Probably today was the warmest day for this work week. With great weather and knowing the weekend is so close, well, tomorrow, I'm pretty sure the plans are ready to roll. Well, under great sunshine, let's see how the other centers coped. In the west, it's always blooming when the weather is fine. Great conditions for the day, little humid too. Eastwards from Pekhawa to Suva, blue skies made everything look so good. And up north, much of the same weather pattern followed suit. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Turning to the tides, high tide at 12.16 a.m. with low tide at 6.51 a.m. Sunrise will be at 5.31. For tomorrow, the weather looks fine, just few odd showers here and there and that depends on the wind blow. Tomorrow's stems, bar will be cool at night, reaching 19 degrees. And looking further on to Sunday, it looks like we have some company and that's rain. Well, whatever the weather, you have a good weekend. It's back to Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji Impulse, we asked, who do you think will win the NRL Grand Final? Uh, Pendis. Because uh, Lem Kikau and uh, Apsai Korisa are playing for the Panthers. I think the Panthers will win because they've been consistent throughout the season. I fan Wunivalu and I think the Storm will win because they have more experienced players. I've been closely following Viniame Kikau and Korisa and definitely the Panthers will win. Now in the world of the weird and the wonderful, a rare green third puppy was born in Italy and the owners believe it's a good omen. Recapping the main stories, for tonight, hefty sentence for rapist pasta. Commission investigates alleged brutality. 
and police traffic operations showing results. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question we're asking, should curfew remain for the rest of the year? Visit our FBC website to answer. And on to our shot of the day, last one for this working week, a beautiful dawn. This was captured at Mommy Bay by Selena Tokalao. And you can send us newsworthy pictures to email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. Share with us by Facebook page and our Twitter page at fbc underscore news. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow from the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Nimo the Manda. My Radio Fiji Rosu Radio Fiji Rosu Radio Fiji Rosu Radio Fiji Rosu Radio Fiji Rosu